Hi there, Lake Church Connection Group leaders. Uh, thank you so much for coming along and so that together we can make disciples for our Lord Jesus. I want to talk to you about a really cool opportunity that I believe you would love. It is called BlessEveryHome.com. BlessEveryHome.com. It is a software that enables us to be able to get to know our neighbors so that we can pray for them, care for them, and share the gospel with them. And so if you go to BlessEveryHome.com, you will be able to create an account. And once you sign up, you can select Lake Church as your church. And that will add you to the whole pool of large number of us that are attempting to reach out into our neighborhood and get to know them and, and build these relationships. In accordance with what Jesus said, you know, he said the two main commandments we have are to love God and to love our neighbors. And so this software is helping us to go out there and reach out to our neighbors and get to know them. I hope you love it. Hey leaders, uh, Lake Church has got the opportunity to partner with Tarrant Area Food Bank and we're going to start serving our community again. So we're looking for some volunteers. If you would share that with your connection group over the next couple of weeks, it's going to be a once a month deal. We're looking at our first one on March 13th and we're going to be early birds. We're going to stay out of the summer heat this time. So see if you can get some volunteers for us. Have them contact me. Give me a call or email me. That would be great. We appreciate your help. Howdy Connection Group leaders, I hope you're having a great day. I want you to do me a favor, pull out your phone, unless you're already watching this video on your phone, and send a text message to the number 81010, and all you have to say in the text message is the at sign, Lake CGL, that stands for Lake Connection Group Leaders. Uh, this is going to allow us to text you very quickly if something changes or just some information we want to get out to you quickly that doesn't require an entire email. This is going to allow us to do that. It doesn't cost you anything. Really, it's just follow those instructions right there. But we'd love it if we do this. Most importantly, this will keep you from getting trapped in those dreaded group text messages that sometimes happen. So, guys, we love y'all. We'll see you soon. Bye bye. Hi, Connection Group leaders. Uh, I'm looking forward to you guys being in the lesson this week. I've had some time to walk through this and uh, look at some of the passage and uh, pull out some observations for you. Uh, I know you've got the lesson. I know you've got the discussion sheets. Uh, don't let the familiarity of this lesson uh, slip by, uh, cause you to slip by and not really hear what God's Spirit is wanting to teach us. Uh, so make sure you use the discussion time well uh, with this passage. A few observations. Number one, make sure you uh, do a quick background uh, on this passage, uh, the period of the, of the patriarchs. Uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Uh, it's where God began to build the nation of Israel and began the family lineage of the coming Messiah. Uh, uh, and needless to say, quite a dysfunctional family tree. Uh, in Matthew 1 and Luke 3, you can find the family trees there. Uh, if you want to reference those. Uh, but all these people throughout the entire history of mankind were used by God in his time uh, to accomplish his plan for redemption. Uh, he is still carrying out that plan, by the way, uh, through believers today, you and me. Um, until Jesus returns, uh, we are active in the redemptive work uh, of God through Christ. Uh, take a look at 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21. And he reminds us uh, that we are all part of this ministry uh, of, of redemption. So uh, be sure to look at that. But that's a little bit of the background of where this lesson is. It also will help your folks to kind of get their minds set in terms of the, the context of the scriptures, uh, the time, the place, the characters, and the culture of what's going on. Um, all of which still the truths apply to us today. Second thing is God will carry out his plan. Uh, he wants you and me to be participants in his plan of redemption, but his plan is not dependent upon you and me. Here's what I mean. Uh, we see that Jacob stole uh, the father's blessing that rightfully belonged to Esau uh, because Esau was the firstborn. Uh, why didn't Isaac go ahead and give Esau a blessing anyway? Well, it's a cultural thing, the cultural institution that God incorporated into the law of Moses. Now, this is before the law, but God had already incorporated this idea of the firstborn uh, carrying on the work of the Father. And so uh, we kind of see this in the gospel as well, Jesus carrying out the work of the Father. Um, but here, uh, it, was the, it was the lawful position of the firstborn to carry on as the head of the family. And we see that Esau showed no care or respect 
uh, for what that meant or for that responsibility. Uh, Hebrews 12, 16, the writer of Hebrews said, Make sure that no one is immoral or godless like Esau, who traded his birthright as the firstborn son of a single for a single meal. In other words, he's saying nothing was sacred to Esau. Um, but here's uh, another point that you'll, I'm sure you see. Uh, God works through free choices of people, both good and bad, to accomplish his plan. Uh, and I know we give Esau a bad rap, uh, but he was cheated by Jacob uh, twice. And so, you know, as far as a man, Esau had every reason in the world to, um, to hate Jacob and even want to kill him. Um, Paul writes in Romans 9, he's quoting Malachi 1-2. He says, the Lord says, yet I love Jacob, but Esau I hated. And that's not a love and hate as in a emotional kind of human love hate. That's not what the writers are here talking about. Scholars point out two things. When Malachi and Paul are referring to uh, Esau, God is, uh, God is speaking of Esau's descendants, the Edomites. He's not talking about Esau himself, but the, but the descendants of Esau. The Edomites. Uh, God was pointing out his plan for the nation of Israel and the Messiah would come through Jacob and the Israelites, not Esau and the Edomites. Um, but eventually God does judge. You look in Jeremiah 49, God does judge the Edomites and has them totally destroyed uh, as, a, as a nation. Um, and again, God chose the people of Israel and the Messiah to come through Jacob, whose name was Israel and not the Edomites. Second thing scholars say about this is God is in charge of his will because he's sovereign. Uh, his promise, his plans are not dependent upon human, uh, natural human descent. Uh, it wasn't according to the natural firstborn descent that the nation of Israel and the Messiah came. I'm sure you'll catch this. It wasn't Abraham and Ishmael. It was Abraham and Isaac. Yet Ishmael was the firstborn. Not Isaac and Esau who was the firstborn, but rather Isaac and Jacob. And it continued. You look, uh, uh, nor was it Jacob and Joseph. You know, we think of Joseph wasn't the firstborn, but Joseph was certainly uh, the most popular. Uh, but even Joseph wasn't part of that family lineage of Christ. Uh, it ended up being Judah. And you can look and see what Judah did. Judah was by no means a, uh, a sinless man. Uh, Pete Cazero. Uh, in his book, uh, this is a devotional, Emotionally Healthy Spirituality, Day by Day. He writes, the Bible does not spin the flaws and weaknesses of its heroes. Abraham lied. Uh, Hosea's wife was a prostitute. Peter rebuked God. Noah got drunk. Noah, uh, Jonah was a racist and Jacob lied. John Mark deserted, uh, deserted Paul. Uh, Jeremiah was depressed and suicidal. Thomas doubted. Moses had a temper. Timothy had ulcers. Even David, one of God's beloved friends, committed adultery with Bathsheba and murdered her husband. Yet all these people teach us the same message, that every human being on earth, regardless of their gifts and strengths, is weak, vulnerable, and dependent on God and others. Um, as someone said last night in Refresh, the point is this. God hits a straight lick with a crooked stick. Okay. Uh, third observation is that, uh, and this is obvious, there are consequences that result in every choice we make, good or bad. Parents and grandparents, this is a great time to sit down and talk to your kids why God wants us to make wise choices using his wisdom of his word. Uh, not just people, because uh, people have a lot of bad advice. But um, here's a time that you can share an example, an appropriate example, mom or dad or grandparent, uh, with your kids of when you made a bad choice and the result of it, uh, the consequence of it, and, or a good choice and point out to them uh, an example of when they made a bad choice and the result of that. But be sure to end on the good example of when they did make a good choice and, um, uh, and had good results with that. And last and thankfully, uh, another great lesson on the grace of God. Now, we say that phrase so easily, uh, grace of God, and sometimes we become so familiar with it that we don't really observe it very closely. It's like a penny. If you pull up a penny, and look, which direction is Lincoln looking? Uh, what's the word stamped behind his head, behind him? Uh, uh, if you flip it on the other side, what's on the other side? Now be careful what you look at because uh, if you look at the newer pennies, it's not what it used to be. All that to say, we become so familiar with something that we, we just kind of glaze over it. Um, the grace of God is not something to be taken for granted. 
Um, and we see the grace of God at work here. God worked through both sons to accomplish his plan in spite of Esau's disrespect and Jacob's deceptions. Uh, God blessed both. Esau, we see later on, uh, he was blessed with wealth, uh, wealth and family. We see that in Genesis 33. And Jacob, of course, was blessed with a family, sons, wealth, and he was even given the name of God's nation. Um, and then eventually God does restore their relationship as brothers we see in Genesis 33. Uh, there's some really good discussion questions on the handout uh, that is titled um, Grace or Pass Grace to Others is the, is the title on that page. Look at those questions and, and really consider those. And then final suggestions here. There's a song I've been listening to lately that I've really enjoyed. Uh, it's titled Your Grace Still Amazes Me. And it's by Phillips, Craig, and Dean. You can find that on YouTube. The name of it again, Your Grace Still Amazes Me. And then a book that I'm really enjoying that really emphasizes the grace of God is The Imperfect Disciple by Jared Wilson. Hope this is helpful. Let me pray. Father, uh, your word comes alive when we allow your spirit uh, to speak to us and teach us and, uh, and work in us as a church family. So Lord, I'm asking your Holy Spirit, speak and teach each of us and bless the conversations we have around your word and help us to, as a church to continue uh, to be shaped by you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, folks. Appreciate y'all.